stuff like that. The goal behind their preaching and teaching is not to make every man perfect, but usually self-ambition. And it's almost like if that's not your intention, then what's the point? If you're not presenting people perfect by your teaching um, and preaching, then it's almost like, what's the point? Unless if the person rejects it, then obviously that's not your fault. But um, So I was thinking, you know, our intentions should be when it comes to preaching and teaching is that every man can pre be presented perfect before Christ. Yeah, I find that as an amazing revelation and the reason is, and if you could just bring that chapter up quickly, I find that amazing because that's a very good point Nicole just made, okay? Because, you see, if your agenda as a minister, as a believer, okay, because all of us are called to minister to somebody, right? Some people to a thousand, some people to a million, some people to your next door neighbor, some people to a family member. We're all called to minister. None of us are 007 Christians. Every single one of us is going to answer to God according to who did we share the message with or the gospel with, right? Whoever or whatever it is that God assigned us to. And depending on your motive, yes, that in verse 28, who we preach, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect. If your intention as a minister is to present people perfect, as Nicole said, what would happen is there would be a particular way that you present the message, okay? If your intention is to get more people in your church, then it's not going to be the same way that you present the message. It might, in fact, be the opposite way. If your intention as a preacher, pastor, teacher, or leader in the church is that, listen, don't upset anyone, keep the money coming in, we need the offering, put the rich people at the front if your agenda is that i need people in my church well come on now like let's be serious here if we want people in the city of god or if we want people in any church all you have it's, it's very easy actually it's very easy i mean remember we had about 40 something people in this group before if you want people you just talk about particular topics like motivation like success and guess what's one of those messages none of us are perfect none of us are perfect we're all just sinners none of us none of us are perfect but this is saying the complete opposite we're here to present us as perfect we're here to present men as perfect so if church is just always saying you're not perfect it's okay you're living in sin it's okay you're not perfect then yeah more people will come to that church that's why there's a lot of people in church that continue to live lifestyles of sin why because the church doesn't talk about those things because it's offensive and we'll lose customers We'll lose clients, you understand? So I think, yeah, it's just a good highlight of that. And not just for the church, but for us individually. When you're ministering to someone, what's your agenda? Because Apostle Paul spoke about a few weeks ago, some people even preach to upset people or to hurt people. So some fire and brimstone preachers, that's their job. I'll be real. Yes, sodomites are sodomites. But also some preachers I've seen, they go to sodomite places in gay pride and they just want to upset everyone. And that's also not what we're called to do. You're called to preach, yes. I'm not against that. But you're not called to just go and get gay people angry for no reason. You know what I mean? If they get angry by your ministry, that's fine. But I've noticed that some ministers, some preachers are provocative. They want to just upset gay people because they don't like gay people. And that's wrong too. So depending on the intention behind why you're giving the message, why are you giving the message to your family member? Why are you giving the message to your brother or sister? Are you trying to show them how sinful they are and you just want them to feel bad? Or are you trying to make them perfect? You know, if you're trying to make someone be perfect in Christ, there's going to be a particular way that you minister that message effectively because you're not trying to gain something from that person. You're actually trying to add gain to that person. Amen, saints. Um, I chuckled a bit uh, when you were reading uh, Philippians 3.14, uh, the I can do all things through Christ's scripture, and how you were saying churches tend to use it out of context. And I chuckled because I also quite recently found out the full context, context of the scripture. So if you suffer loss, be content. If you about be content 
and I had shared that scripture. And then that same week that I, I found out about that scripture, and that same week I actually shared it with someone who had just suffered um, loss. Uh, she, I think she had lost her cousin and I actually referred her to that scripture. Um, I never got a response, um, but essentially what I was trying to point out to her is that even in loss, like still look to Christ for strength, you know, um, and things like that. Sometimes we don't really need to um, say things like, okay, God, God can't, yes, there is, there is for that god does love you god does care um but also sometimes I, I try not to lead people to to sorrow whenever they're going through bad stuff i always try to lead them to christ to gain strength from him so that should they be faced with a similar circumstance in future they know how to get over it without having the need to feed the emotions and so forth um yeah so yeah, that's a very good point. And then um, with regards to presenting every man uh, perfect in front of God, it's I find the way uh, the diction to be quite purposeful because he says present. And when you present something, it's think of it in terms of class. When you're presenting something, you want to present something you're, you're like proud of. You know, you want to present something that you've been giving your time, that you've been working on, that you've been molding and sculpting and just being very generous with it. So it, it, it to me, that says Apostle Paul actually sat down with his the people he was preaching to and molding them. I remember even one scripture where he, I think he was walking with Silas and he told Silas, Silas, let's go back to where we preach the gospel. Let's go check if these people are still following the things that we gave them. So you see how he was always willing to go, go back and check, are we still walking the walk? Are we still talking the talk? And just giving them his time to ensure that they are perfect. So I believe preachers should be that, not this whole thing of preach on a Sunday. Okay, I'm going to my family for the rest of the six days. I'll see you next Sunday. What happens in between when the people are struggling with pornography? What happens in between when people are struggling with gossiping? You know, how do, do you advise them and so forth? So, yeah. Solid. Funny because church was never actually one day. Historically, it was never one day. That was man made tradition. In the Bible, it said they gathered every day and broke bread together. It wasn't one day. Um, the day of rest was one day in the Old Testament but the church was never one day and so you find that a lot of things that we do today is just because we just follow the patterns of our recent forefathers who are westernized and western world took over the whole world and so now it's like as Oetu said Sundays for church every other day is for myself and my family and my ambitions but no biblically every day was for God every day belongs to God every day is the same actually there's no God day, every day is for God you know what I mean and so um, clearly um, I'm not sure where the verse was but it was around the beginning it was talking about God being Jesus, God and Father and just what I got from that was how God is Jesus is God and his Father which reminds me of Paul being a Pharisee but he was also a son of a Pharisee so how Jesus is God he is also the son of God um, that's what I got and then um, where was it so Colossians 1 15 and um, it just reminded me of the scripture of John 1 where um, John was talking about how Jesus is the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing 
was not anything made that was made. So I just feel like that was kind of like the same revelation. What Paul was getting was also that John had as well. I was thinking about that scripture that you brought up, Oetu, was it, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I was thinking how that scripture, how it's been made, as Chica said, like one of the most motivational scriptures in like the Bible. But yet in its context, when it's right context, it could, could actually be the most offensive um, scripture, like especially if you apply it to something like slavery. You know, because a lot of people like to complain about slavery and you take them to that scripture and be like, well, be content in your slavery, like be content being a slave. You know, so it really made me think um, that that scripture, when it's applied correctly, can actually be quite offensive to the wrong people, obviously. Um, So, yeah, I thought it was really interesting. Well, what do we do about American racism? I can do all things in Christ Jesus. It's funny because, as you said, it is offensive. That's that's neat the way you put it. Because if somebody says that to you when you lose your family member, yeah, and this is interesting. I've spoken to you about this before, Nicole. So when I lost my mom, I didn't really mind what people say. And let me be frank. Some people said the dumbest thing. Some people did. Not everyone, but some people really do say silly things. Um, someone said sorry that your mum died from cancer and I said actually she didn't die from cancer but thanks I didn't get offended but what I found interesting is that I know two ministers who are quite big in the UK both of them are quite known in the UK and they lost their parents the same year as me right because a lot of people lost their parents in 2020 it was very interesting I know at least 15 people and so um including one of my carers as well or two and but these ministers were on Facebook and they were so angry and they were saying things like and this is what it was reminding me of when you were speaking to because they was on, on Facebook talking about when we're going through grief don't give us Bible scriptures one of them he calls himself an apostle and I used to actually go to his church when I was a baby Christian he was saying I know the Bible I know the Bible more than you shut up that's kind of how he speaks because he's got his accent shut up I know the Bible more than you shut up just let me grieve just let me grieve don't say anything and so and then another one did the same thing he said something like sometimes you just feel like elbowing people in the face like they were really offended that people were giving them Bible scriptures when they were in their grief and the reason is because I even heard an interview of one of these guys yesterday which is recent and he was going he was recollecting that time and confirming the discernment that I had of him at the time and he was saying that he was angry with God I'm not condemning people if they've ever been angry with God. If you're angry with God, you need to deal with that stuff. I'm not condemning it. But what I'm saying is people that tend to be angry with God are very selfish. Those are the people that are like, why me? Why did my mom have to die? Why couldn't it be somebody else's mom? I've always said this. Whenever you say, why me, saints? You're basically saying it should have happened to your next door neighbor. You're basically saying it should have happened to me. You're basically saying it sh- you're, you're so great that it shouldn't happen to you. God, why me? Why didn't you choose somebody that's worse than me? And how selfish and evil is that? So we have to repent from why me, you know? I never said why me one time in my entire eight years in this wheelchair situation, in, in, in this calamity. Not once. Not one time. Not one time. Because it is me thank god that it was me maybe somebody else couldn't handle it so i'm not going to say why me um this is what god said that i require therefore i require it when job was suffering for doing nothing wrong he said god gives and god takes job's wife was like why don't you just curse god he's ruined you why why are you praising him and job says you foolish woman god gives and god takes away okay and he says though he slays me i will praise him so even if god cast me to the floor and ruins my life I will praise him that's, and that's Job without the understanding that it was even Satan that was just him thinking God was punishing him for no reason and it wasn't a punishment it was a test but yet he was still able to praise him so I just find the nature of men very selfish in that 
you know, I, I did. Sp I, I've spoken to a few people grieving on my Facebook over the years because people tend to come to me, even though people want to act like they don't know me in public. They come to me in secret in Messenger, and they'll say, "How did you get through this? And how come?" And and some of them would say things like, "You know, it's not fair." One of them said, "It's not fair that my mom, this person's mom, has died," and she said, "And the world's carrying on, and it's not fair." She wants the world to end because if her mum's not here, why is everybody continuing with their life? That's how selfish we are, isn't it? Remember when COVID, quote unquote COVID, was in China? Remember, nobody cared. Does anyone remember life before COVID? Nobody cared. Oh, it's just China. They die all the time. Nobody cares. Oh, it's just Syria. They die all the time. No one cares. COVID's in England. Oh my gosh, everyone's panicking, running under the bed. T.D. Jake's stuck under his bed. Everyone's afraid because now it's affecting me. You see how selfish we are. And I'm going to say this comment because I've said this a few times in the group and I was talking to my carers about it yesterday. Just this idea, right? There's a burning house and your children are in the house and other people's children are in the house. 